Reporter, that's the price of fame, my dear. Could be I've heard of you too, Teddy Faust, right? Well, I never argue with a lady, especially one from the press. <laughs> oh, this is really something, Ted. You know, I just love the feel of the place. Thank you, thank you. I just uh, hope you like the food, because uh, we could use a good review. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Zeb is right here in the bar with his wife Judy, and they're both expecting you. Okay, if he starts in about the balance sheet and the debits and the credits and whatnot, I'll be waiting right here. So oh, glad you came. Are Thanks you? for coming. Hey, you're sweating. You're feeling all right? Well, well, I'm just a little worried. Our accountants are supposed to worry. I mean, we learn that in school, don't we? Sit down. Well, it's been a while since you did the books for the Valley Advocate. Yeah, well, it's been a couple of years at least, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Judy, my wife. This is Kate Kelly. Hi, Kate. It's my pleasure. Oh, Seth, this is magnificent. If the food is anything like the atmosphere. Ambience. Ambience. Oh, ambiance. Oh, yes, ambiance. Well, if it is, you've got a four-star restaurant on your head. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty of a Bordeaux, huh? Ah, 61 Mouton Rothschild. Well, listen, Kate, I want to show you something. Judy, will you excuse us for a minute? Oh, he's Come on. <laughs> you two behave yourselves. I'd say, Kate, it's the happiest night of my life. Huh? I just don't know how you can do this and still have time to run your accounting business. Oh, that's gone. I sold that. I never wanted to be in the first place. You don't mean it. Absolutely. I'm in a restaurant business now, kill or cure. And you know something? This is where I belong, where I've always wanted to be, and where I'm going to stay. Oh, Zeb, that's marvelous. Oat cuisine, no less. And you know something? We have a chance, a real shot, at being world famous. And you know something else? For the first time in my life, I feel as if I'm accomplishing something. Wow. Oh, Zeb, there really is something wrong with you. Now, come on. No, no I'm fine. I just, uh, I guess I've just been working too hard or something. Come on, let me, let me show you this miraculous chef we've got here. Dorsey Hall. How oh, we're cooking with gas. Smells like heaven in here tonight, boys. Vive la France. <laughs> we got hot pasta tonight, we got. Stop it. Honey, I've got too much to do. Now, stop it. Sweetheart, stop it. these people understand. They're French. When are you going to understand that when you consider to be my lust, they consider a virtue? Oh, what am I going to do with you, huh? Oh, just teach me how to cook. Scalapini. <laughs> do you mind if I pry you to a party? Dorsey Hall is a Kate Callahan. Hello? Hi. She's the soul of our restaurant, so to speak. <laughs> well, it's better than some of the looks I get. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. It's just that you're so young. Oh, she may be young, but she's an artist. Carly gastronomie, la pyramide and le You may think you've tasted duck à l'orange, but uh, elle est vraiment fond oh. You know what I mean? You know what you are, <laughs> a dirty young man. And Dorsey loves every minute of it. There's something wrong, Kate. Oh, no. I'm just standing here inhaling. When do we eat, for heaven's sake? This not, I'm, no, not until you've seen my new car. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, look at that! Zip! Can you imagine what it's like? Everything Ooh. going your way, everything going your way at last. So much, all at once, Kate. Everything oh. in life to look forward to, huh? Everything to look Zeb, what? Zeb, talk Kate. to me. What is it? What's happening here? Oh, my God, I can't breathe. Come uh, on. Kate, there was something the matter with it. Come on. What do you mean, Zeb? What's happening to me? What? Oh, Zeb. Oh, my God. Not that. Yes, I think he's dying. Come on. Go ahead and get the phone. Oh, where is he? Where'd he go? What happened? The car's gone, too.
looks, Kate. He just got up and drove away. Oh, Mike, that's impossible. The man was unconscious. He was dying. Dead, even, for all I know. Yeah, well, what went down then, Kate? I wish I knew. Oh. How long were you in there? 30 seconds, maybe 40, certainly less than a minute. I mean, just physically impossible for Zeb to... Mike, I'm telling you, something really weird happened. What's happened to Zeb? Oh, uh, this is Mike Barrick, LAPD. Judy Arno, Mike. Hello. Kate, where is my husband? Uh, we're working on that, Mrs. Harlan. How can it be? I mean, he can't just vanish. How can something like this happen? Mrs. Arnold, I'll need a description of your husband and the car. Don't bother her with that, and I won't give you the description. Okay, fine. We'll put out an APB on your husband, and I'll keep in touch. Come on inside. I'll buy a drink. But that's no reason to hit me for 300 bucks. Josh, we have to know it was in that wine, or don't you think it's newsworthy? So let the cops pay for the test. <laughs> what cops? There is no direct evidence of a crime having been committed. Quote from guess who? Still no, Kate. How do I know it's worth it? Kate, this bill just came in from the lab. 300 bucks. You did. That wine was laced with escadine coline, 14 grams. Oh. Doesn't sound entirely friendly. It kills, and then hides in the tissues. Wow. The best coroner in the world would diagnose, so well, there's a whole list of things, which all look like natural causes. Asphyxiation, cardiorespiratory change. You think it's murder? What else can I think? Arno hasn't shown up anywhere. He was my accountant for three years. He seemed an affable young fellow. Who would want him out of the way? Maybe the man who gave him the wine. His loving friend and partner, Teddy Faust. At least according to his sommelier. And Josh, that was a 61 Mouton Rothschild. Anybody who'd louse up a bottle of wine like that has no character at all. Zilch! Okay. What's so urgent? It's not urgent, it's infuriating. I've been tailing Teddy Faust for two days now. Trail ends across the street in a little apartment in the back. You mean he lives over there? Well, yes and no. You see that sports car? Over there. Belongs to Teddy Faust. Red car down the street? Judy Arno. Oh, so they're playing house. Over two years now, and nobody knew about it. Kate, it's not murder. Oh, isn't it? Zev Arno's been missing for three days now. When are you going to believe me? We keep having the same conversation. All you have here is a missing person report filed two days ago. Mike, that wine was poisoned. Isn't that probable cause or something? Now we find these two playing around. What's that word that you like so much that isn't a little kinky? Well, maybe to you and maybe even to me, but not to the department. If there's no direct, direct evidence, evidence of a crime, crime being, being committed, committed, of course. Nothing. Well, what would you call it? Looks like the whole car has been wiped clean, including the trunk and underneath the hood. How long has it been sitting here? Since late Friday night. Watchmen across the street noticed it. About 2 a.m. this morning. That's the night he disappeared, Mike. Yeah, I know. You know, it's funny. The car's been sitting here for three days and no one's ripped it off. In this neighborhood, huh? <laughs> How about that? Maybe they really do believe in us. Hey, what are you looking at me like that for? Hey, for all we know, Arnold just got fed up with things and disappeared. Happens all the time. Guy goes out for a newspaper and never comes back, right? I'm not going to buy that, Mike. 
His last words to me were, everything's going my way. He was a happy guy. He had everything he wanted. Yeah, sure. But forgive me, Kate. You knew this guy. Maybe your feelings are getting in the way. If you found out about his wife cheating, well, maybe he found out. Oh, well. What's the difference, hmm? No body, no murder. No case, no help. Unless, of course, that's telling us something. That could be the whole idea, couldn't it? No body, no case. No case, no cops. Talk about getting away with murder. Do we know anybody that smart? something. How about a nice glass of wine? Listen, Ted, <laughs> tell me, how do things stand with you anyway? Why, and what's that? A restaurant, financial. How do you stand? I mean, what's going on? Mm, sit down. Thank you. I'll tell you, Kate, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of in limbo. You see, Zev had all the money and he made all the deals, but uh, I'll tell you the truth, I just don't know which end is up. But I thought you two were partners. Oh, you better believe it. I hocked my soul to buy into this. Listen, what I know about corporations and holding companies, forget about it. Teddy, if you hocked your soul, you must know something. I guess we're talking about the trust fund. That's right. Give what's in it. $500,000. The what? See, I put up a quarter of a million, and Zev put up a quarter of a million. That's 500 grand, so. <sighs> you know something I don't? Half a million bucks, and you call that being in limbo? Well, now you don't have to interrogate me, Kate. Just I got the goods right here in my safe. Take a look for yourself. Hm. I'll show you. There we have it. Now take a look at this. Huh? Partnership agreement. You should look that over. Get more out of it than I would. It's all hieroglyphics to a guy like me. Can't make it in the tail out of that kind of stuff. In the event of death, the surviving partner gets 100% of the business, all property, and the $500,000 trust fund. That's just in case business gets off to a slow start. That's what you gotta have to keep going, okay? Well, then, Ted, you know, I'd say you're all right. I'm all right. I'm in debt up to my tush, but I'm all right. How can that be when you get it all? The money, the property, the restaurant, everything. Kate, okay, unless Zev is proven legally dead, I don't get a son. And Zev's not dead, he's just missing. And that's all I meant by limbo. Oh, that's very interesting. I thought you didn't understand this stuff. Oh, well, Zev explained all this to me the other day, as a matter of fact. So I know my money is safe. Even if I can't get at it. You mean yet? Right. <laughs> Doesn't bother you in the least, does it? What, Zev's disappearance? Sure. He's my friend. Hey, don't slam the door. My souffles are falling. Sweetheart, you remember Kate Callahan? Oh, sure. Hello. Hi. What's going on in here, anyway? Hello, this is Teddy Fowles. Rye, what can I do for you? Well, hey, whoever you are, you know, that's not very funny these days, but I have to admit you're rather good. Well, you're right, it couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> this is Zevano here on the phone right now. Where are you? Oh, look, you will you give me the foot? Darling, where are you? Do you have any idea what I've been going through? Where are you? What is happening? <sighs> he hung up. Darling? Matter of fact, yes, and proud of it. Well, how long has this been going on, sweetheart? None of your business, you bloody hypocrite. Me? I'm the hypocrite? Excuse me here. I, I just want to ask... Yes, hypocrite. Seeing how you've been shacking up with Judy Arno for two years. 
Oh, that's right, sweetheart. Don't give me that holier-than-thou look. I know better. Excuse me just a minute, please. Uh, are you certain that was him on the phone? Was that Zeb on the phone? You how long I've wanted to see your face when you found out exactly what's been going on right in front of your nose. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment. Dorsey, please. Oh, fuck off, Dorsey. Was that Arno? Was it him on the phone? How do I know? Whoever it was just hung up. Well, then all we've got is your word for it, right, Ted? About what? That Zev Arno is still alive. Why would I lie about a thing like that, Kate? You lie? <laughs> Kate, we just didn't have the nerve to tell him. That's it. After two years, you still wouldn't tell him? I'd say you got plenty of nerve. Oh, what are the looks for? I just thought you knew the man. Every time I went out anywhere, or saw a man even casually, I had to account for it. Oh, you're kidding. Hey, would you stop being so polite? You know, the man is Jekyll and Hyde. It's that simple. He's insanely jealous one minute, he's filled with remorse, and next he bounces you around like you're some kind of a ping-pong ball. Hey, listen, you guys. I only know Zeb from the few times he came into the Valley Advocate. He did the books. He seemed like a nice fellow. That's because he didn't think he owned you, Kate. Judy, you are describing some kind of weird, whacked-out tri-schizoid. Well, then there would be witnesses, wouldn't there? Lots of witnesses. No, ladies, ladies, we're just describing a man here who happens to be extremely careful with whom he opens up to. That's all. You are the experts. Why don't you tell me what happened to Zev Arno? Where is he? Well, for all I know, he could be standing right behind you. I don't know. Kate, the man is capable of anything. Anything? Anything. Boy, he sure fooled me. Well, you know, that's because that's the very thing that he's so good at. He's so good at concealing his inner nature, you know? Where'd you get those I matches don't... from? These are bleaks. Uh, we rent space there. That is, uh, the restaurant does. <laughs> and you don't think that deserves a mention? Certainly to the police, if not to me. Well, why, Kate? Because Zev's car was found just across the street from there. That, that, that's just a frozen food locker. What is so sinister about that? Maybe nothing. But there's a way to find out, isn't there? <laughs> you think I'm suspect again, don't you? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to arrange for you to go down to the restaurant. I want you to pick up the keys and go down there yourself, because I promise you, Kate, I have nothing to hide. Not now, anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. Goodbye, Judy. Bye, Kate. Thanks for the tea. I really appreciate your consideration. I'll see you later. You betcha. Think she'll find anything? <laughs>
Sergeant Varick, please. Where in the field? Well, uh, yes, I have an urgent message for him. It's Kate Callahan. Tell him to meet me at Bleak's frozen food locker immediately. Arno's dead. Come and see for yourself. Well, Kate, you're half right. He's dead. That's not Zev Arno. waiting for you. I was right outside there. I never took my eyes off this door, not for one moment. Well, well you came outside to get me. Okay, for what? Ten seconds? Twenty, maybe? Mike, I'm telling you, I swear it was Arno. It was him. No. Some guy named Oscar C. Riddle. He's a private detective. Now? Oh, I'm hurrying, man. Think I like it in here? <clears throat> hey, what did you do? Shoot him yourself? He hasn't been dead more than 20 minutes. And that's when I got your call. Well, it's a slow day, Barlow. I had to do something. <sighs> you know about this? Shell case, 7.65 millimeter. No, I don't. Where'd you find it? On a floor in there, near the body. A 7.65 millimeter. That'd be a what? A Mauser? That's very good, lady. 20 minutes? Must have happened when we were right outside here, Mike. Except we'd have heard the shot. Yeah, unless it happened in there with the door closed. It'd be pretty soundproof. Hey, Sarge. What's up? We found a car around the corner. I ran a check on the plates. It belongs to the victim. All right. I thought I was going home. Why don't you go home? Change your mind yet? Mike, it was Zev Arno. Are you sure? Did you get a really good look at him? I knew the man. How could I mistake him for a total stranger? I don't know, and, and I believe you. But I think you were seeing things. Hello? I need some help. Hey, is somebody over there? <gasps> you know who that sounds like. All right. Police officer. What are you doing here? I wish I knew myself. Why am I? Hey, is this your idea of a joke? What on earth? What happened to you? Hey, look, guys, I just happened to stop for a stoplight, and the man gets in my car and yeah, puts a gun what in my man? What? What man? I never saw the guy before in my life. You know, we changed cars, we drove around for a while. You mean I'm here, not... you were kidnapped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say there's no other word for it. Right. And you ended up here? Right here. Yeah, obviously. You see, I, I had no choice in the matter. What is he gonna have? We have a little problem here, Ted. Bono, bring the gurney over here. Come here. I'd like you to uh, take a look at something. Come here. Have you ever seen this man before? I don't believe this. This is him. This is the one who kidnapped me. Come off hey, it. Jack, that is the dude I was just with. I want to know what's going on here. Listen, um, you don't have known a gun, do you? Yeah, I do. Why? It's not a 765 Mauser. I just, how do you know that? Where do you keep it? I keep it in a table next to me. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. It's gone. Amazing. Well, someone's out there getting me. Any place else you can think of? The gun. No, no, no. I never took it out of there. I don't even know if it works. Oh, I have a feeling it does. 
Mind if we uh, search the place? I could get a warrant. No, no. You go right ahead. That won't be necessary. Good. Now I just shudder to think what he's going to find now. Oh, really? Why? Why? Well, after the Mickey Mouse ride with the black bag, did you see what the man done me? Well, now my gun's missing. And Dick Tracy here, he suspects me of murder. And you want to know why? No. I want to know why. I don't know, lady. I, I still don't like it. You have the authorization right there in your hand. Yeah, but I got my orders, too. We're saving this here murder scene for the forensic guys. Listen, I'm not going to steal anything, if that's what you're thinking. Just don't touch anything, lady, huh? I won't. Listen, officer, would you just stand here and hold the door open like that, like a love? Oh, you're an angel. Thank you. All right, Stuart, help Jenny on with the things. Okay. I was sitting here like this. I heard Mike coming, and I went out to meet him. He said something about a put-on. I said, I wish it was. Come see for yourself. Good Lord. That's only eight seconds. Call it ten. All right, Stuart. You'll be Oscar Riddle, and I'll be the killer. Okay. I think the best place for you to go is around the corner. Jenny, sweetheart, you really don't mind now, do you? Who am I supposed to be? Zev Arno. Lady, what are you doing? Stuart. All set. Okay, ready, and go. Oh, oh, oh. Bang, Riddle's dead. 17 seconds, that's no good. We've got to do it again. Jenny? Stuart, just scream when you're ready. Lady, what are you doing? Okay, I'm all set. Okay, ready and go. <laughs> Bang, you did. Oh, 16 seconds. It's just not possible. It's not even close to possible. There's got to be another answer. I can think of one, lady. Can you wait just a minute? I think I have the answer, at least half of it. Uh-huh, well, maybe I beat you to it. Faust just handed me his Mauser. What? About an hour ago, just walked in and handed it to me. He said it was in the restaurant somewhere, in the desk drawer or something. He just handed it to you? Mm -hmm. Full of purity and innocence. He said someone's trying to frame him for murder. That could be. Oh, could it now? <laughs> Remember Riddle, dead guy, private eye? Well, we went through his records, found out that Faust was listed as one of his clients. He hired him back about a year ago. Teddy Faust? Mm-hmm. Of course, Faust never heard of the guy. Never saw him before. You don't believe him. Why should I? We'll know in a minute. OK, what's this hot flash? Zev Arno was a wine connoisseur. He had degrees in wine tasting. Now, Escadine Coline leaves a bitter aftertaste. Oh I feel so stupid. Why didn't I see it before? Arno would never drink that wine. He'd just throw it out. And if he didn't drink the wine... And if he didn't drink the wine, he wouldn't be dead. Is that what you're trying to tell me? After all the noise you've been giving me? The whole thing was staged to make me believe it. Staged? What's staged? Riddle's been following me around for days. He had to be Mike in order to explain the timing, the phone calls, the coincidences, all the stuff that's been driving me nuts. Yeah. The minute I took my eyes off the freezer door to go and let you in, Riddle walked in. And he said, OK, the coast is clear. Arno was in there already, frosty eyeglasses and all. And he pulls out the mouse. He shoots Riddle. He looks around to make sure no one sees him. And then he splits. There wasn't time for anything else. It was staged, Mike, staged to make me believe that Arno was dead. Kate, what does that accomplish? Get Teddy Faust in trouble, of course. 
Okay. What we got here is the weapon that killed Oscar Riddle. Oh, you see? No, I don't. Why not? Because I think it's blackmail. Oh, really, now? Where'd you get that? Well, Riddle's a private eye, okay? He finds out about Faust and Judy Arnold fooling around. Nice and simple, isn't it? Okay. You want it simple? What's wrong with revenge? Revenge? What are you talking about? Zev Arno. His wife said he was schizoid, a real Jekyll and Hyde. And I'm beginning to believe it's true. I think he's behind the whole thing, doing it all. Zev Arno, the dead guy. Well, I must be getting smart. I've been telling you for days now, he's not dead, he's just missing. Just suppose now, just suppose he finds out that his wife is cheating on him with his best friend. Old story, right? Katie'd okay, flat out kill him. It's too complicated. Not if Zev really is a little crazed. Well, crazy people don't work that way. Anyway, it's, it's, it's Faust. He's the bad guy. Oh, so then I just imagined it all. Zev Arno in the freezer and all, huh? Kate, I have an open mind. You bring me Arno, I will believe anything. <laughs> Sitting here drinking. All by yourself? Zev is gone. You know, I'm flat broke and I'm going to jail. And we should have a drink, kiddo. Chateau Latour, huh? Oh, it's an indifferent year. This is ridiculous. How long have you been in here anyway? Who knows? Well, where is everybody? Why'd you close up? Because she's gone. The soul of my restaurant, Kate, is gone. Doors. Quit. Oh, well, come on. Pull yourself out of it. Hey. Do you understand that someone is out to get me? Kate. Someone is out to get me. Teddy, when was the last time you ate? Who cares? Well, I care. The fact is, I'm a little hungry myself. How about a nice big steak? No. Teddy, you have got to eat. Where do you keep me? Over there? Don't you go away. Chateau Latour yet. this time. This time. I told you. They got me. All right. What is it? What happened? Well, our friend Arno died after he ate, very shortly after he ate, wherever that was. Ingesting, I would say, two enchiladas, some refried beans, Spanish rice, a beer or two. Wait a minute. What killed him? Well, that remains vague. Asphyxiation, heart irregularity, maybe both. Ding, 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 ding. Sound familiar, Mike? Hmm. Escadine coline. Hey, that's something to look for. I'll run the test and let you know. Good, thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Still sound like blackmail? Hmm? Sounds like a mess to me. Not so nice and simple, huh? Well, uh, Katie, what you want me to do, eat my words? I'll wait till the jury is in, thanks. See you later. Where are you going? Uh, a few things to do, like check out Dorsey Hall, Judy Arno, oh, where they were all day yesterday. Like the Arno thing. What's your motive? I mean, why would anybody do... Oh, for 
course. The money. Why didn't I think of it before? What's the matter with me? Do you uh, know your way around high finance? Oh, no. Not exactly. To begin with, it's not an ordinary trust fund. There are several corporations involved. Wait a minute. The partnership agreement said cash. Well, yes, but uh, it would be madness, wouldn't it? To leave that kind of capital just sitting around not collecting interest? Yeah, I suppose so. It's all designed to be liquidated virtually overnight, if necessary. Where do I start? In the file room. Great. Who's this? Trust fund, right. Well, uh, there's a woman in here asking about it. He said to call if anyone came in. Well, they did it, Mike. The money is gone. All of it. Wait a minute, who is they? After a day and a half of legwork, I can tell you with authority. I don't know, but I don't think anybody else knows either. I can tell you where the money went. Here's a copy of the authorization notice. Oscar Riddle. <laughs> I've seen it on microfilm. A check for five hundred thousand dollars, paid to the order of Oscar Riddle. Yeah, but this is dated three days ago. He was dead three days ago. Oh no, wait, he died three days ago. Who would trust him with a half a million bucks? Nobody. That's why he's dead. But as long as you've got a body on your hands, why waste it, huh? Pin it on Teddy Faust. Makes no sense to me. Uh, what you're saying first is Arnold steals the money. No, no, only half. Teddy's half. The rest was his to begin with. Oh, a quarter of a million. Too bad, huh? Then he just turns the money over to Riddle. You've heard, have you not, of laundered money? Riddle was part of the laundry. Cash out the trust fund without anybody knowing about it. Arnold had Teddy signing things he didn't even understand. They did it in bits and pieces, Mike. 60,000 here, 80,000 there. It adds up. Well, maybe. Well, I'm telling you, that's how they did it. The question is now, who killed Arno? No mystery to me. Teddy Faust. For a dame and a half a million bucks, it's always a good motive. Even better motive for Zev Arno. What? He also wanted the money. First he gets even with Faust and maybe runs over this girl, huh? Start a whole new life someplace, a new identity. I hate to say it, guy was a friend of mine. It had to be Zevarno. Had to be. Awful lot of trouble. You said it yourself, Mike, a dame and half a million. Too bad we can't question Riddle. He had all the answers. Well, maybe we still can if we search his office, his apartment. It wouldn't be there, not at Riddle's place. So where would it be? Kate, I don't know, but it wouldn't be there. Not a half a million bucks. They'd, they'd have it on ice somewhere. Ice? Oh, you don't suppose? Sure. That's why Arno was there. I will bet you anything to pick up the money. I caught him flat-footed, Mike. That's what happened. It is such a long shot. I'd feel stupid just going over there for a look.
my, my, looky here. Wowie kazowie. Kate, cheer up. It's not always fun being right, Josh. Oh, well, I know. Oh, stop it. <laughs> now, look at that. I'm sorry this took so long. I'm just trying to establish a little order in that kitchen. Now, this is a specialty of the house. It's a brand new creation. I think you're both going to be very, very surprised. Oh, marvelous. Who have you got cooking for you, anyway? Well, if you promise not to spread it around, he's the short order cook from the coffee shop down the street. <laughs> he's what? Oh, yeah. Claims he's the Baron Grigoriev Polchevsky, descendant of the Tsar. Yeah. Some kind of a genius. But can you trust him? Exactly. Listen, you never know about chefs, but these Tsarist types, you know, you could order yourself a nice piece of steak and end up with a bowl of borscht. Mmm. Outstanding. The man is a genius. Ah, uh, well, he's not so versatile. Not the way my Dorsey was. Did you ever taste Dorsey's Mexican food, Kate? No, thank you. Zev Arno did, and that was the end of him. That was a woman who hated everybody. Zev didn't do too badly in the hate department. He tried to frame you because he was jealous. He even killed that private detective. I guess he just figured that Dorsey would never double-cross him. Mm hmm. Love is a mess. Sometimes. Ah, uh, the wine? No, I selected this personally just for the two of you. Thank you. Wait a minute. A 61 Mouton Rothschild? Isn't that what started this whole thing? You still don't trust me, do you? At this point, Josh, I wouldn't be too sure about anything. Better call the coroner. Gotcha. 